The Lord Jesus had 12 original disciples, but those men were just the first of many more followers of Christ. They are an example for us to learn from and a reminder that God works in ordinary people. Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Let's study the 12 with Scott Pauley today and find truth that will help us all to follow more closely to Christ. How many names do you have? Now, I don't mean by that first, middle, and last, but are you known by different names? Uh, Some people get nicknames or uh, some name assigned to them on the job or at school somewhere by family, and it just sticks with them all of their life. Well, today we've come to one of our Lord's original disciples who is known by three names. This is important to understand because you don't want to get confused as you're comparing these lists and reading through the gospel records. In Mark chapter number 3, he is known as Thaddeus. Perhaps you've heard that name before, Thaddeus. He's also known as Lebius, and he's also known as Judas. Now, be careful here, not Judas Iscariot, another Judas. Just like there are two men named James, there are two men by the name of Judas, very prominent names in that day. And this particular man, Thaddeus, Lebius, Judas, uh, is is basically another one of the unknown followers of Christ. I love what Herbert Lockyer said. He said, some of these men were unknown but not unfaithful. That's a great statement uh, because like the, the last disciple that we studied together, James the son of Alphaeus, we know very little about this man. This is a man that we know nothing of his call. We know nothing of his personality. We know nothing of his accomplishments. But that's okay. What we do know is, is the only thing that really matters, and that is he was a true follower of Jesus Christ. And the only picture we have of him, the only Spirit-inspired portrait of this man is found in John 14, which to me is very significant. Because John 14, you remember, some of our Lord's last words to the disciples on his way to the cross. He's about to leave them. It is the very same passage where, where Thomas asks a question, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? It's the same passage where Philip speaks of and says, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. So there's a back and forth between the disciples and the Lord, a back and forth. And may I just make an application here? That's the way it ought to be with our Lord Jesus. Every day there should be a back and forth with Christ. Every day the Lord should be speaking to you, and you should be speaking to him. Let every day bring a conversation with Christ. Let every day be a day of communion with the Lord Jesus. And so in that context, we come to John chapter 14. Jesus is speaking in verse 21, and he says this, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to love him in order for him to love us. That's not what he's teaching. In fact, in Scripture, the same writer, John, in another place, says we love him because he first loved us. He always loves first. He always gives of himself first. The principle here, Jesus is saying, is if you really love me, it will be proved by a life of obedience. And if you truly love me and will fully obey me, you'll know more and more of my love. In other words, you'll come closer and closer to me. There's, a, there's an intimacy with God that comes only from obedience. Would you like to know God? You can't know him from a distance. You have to get close to him. You have to follow close to him. And so what Jesus is saying is if you want to go deeper into my love and if you want to go deeper in the knowledge of who God is and closer to the Father, then love me more and obey me more. And as you do that, you'll be a closer disciple. I think it's very interesting that as soon as he says that, It is this man, Thaddeus, Lebius, here identified as Judas, that speaks up because he's not an inner circle disciple. He is not Peter, James, or John. He wasn't there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, He's not there in Jairus' house. Uh, He will not be there in the Garden of Gethsemane in the inner garden. And yet there does seem to be a hunger here to this man who says, I want to know more. I, I do want to go deeper. I'm not there yet, but I long for that. 
And listen to his question. John 14, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? He has some questions. It's not just Thomas that has questions. It's not just Nathaniel that has questions. Every disciple has questions. Maybe you're grappling with some question today, trying to understand, trying to figure it out. It's okay. It's all right to have questions. Thinking people ask questions. The Lord knows we have questions. It's what you do with the questions. And so this man brings the question to the Lord and gets his answer from the Lord in verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and he will come to, we will come to him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Basically, here's what he says to this man. He says, look, it's not that I am playing favorites. It's not that I love the disciples more than the world. Rather, the world doesn't love me. The disciples do. In other words, God's not flipping a coin in heaven about who he's going to be uh, good to and reveal these blessings and reveal himself to. No, the Lord is simply saying, I'm going to present myself, and based on your response to me, that will determine how much you know. You see, those who obey the Lord, they come into a deeper knowledge of the Lord. It's like Jesus saying in another place, if any man will do my will, he shall know of the doctrine. Uh, Somebody perhaps listening to me today is waiting for a lightning bolt from heaven, God to write it in the sky and reveal himself. Friend, while you're waiting on God, God's waiting on you. Take the first step of faith and obedience, and as you begin to follow Christ that way, God will show himself to you. Now, very briefly, let me give you uh, about this disciple that has three names, three truths. Three things I've observed in this passage. Three things the Lord wanted him to know and he wants every disciple to know. Uh, The first truth is this, that he wants you to love and obey him. Isn't that beautiful and so simple? At the very end, he's still teaching the same principles. Just love me and obey me. Love me and obey me. What should every disciple do? Love Jesus and obey Jesus. That was good for Simon Peter. That's good for this anonymous disciple. He wants you to love him and he wants you to obey him. Number two, I learned from this man that Jesus wants you to have a good testimony because the Holy Spirit is careful to say, Judas, and then notice this, not Iscariot. Do you find it significant that our Lord wanted this man's name to be protected, that he did not want him to be confused with the traitor, with the man who walked away, with the man that was not the right kind of disciple? Friends, if our Lord is that concerned about our name, we ought to be concerned about his good name in our life, about our testimony. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Judas Iscariot, one of the great riches. But this man, this man, the Lord said, I want his testimony to be kept clean. This man, Thaddeus, Lebius, Judas, is not Iscariot. The first truth the Lord wants for every disciple to learn is that he just wants you to love him and obey him. The second is that he wants you to keep a good testimony. And the third is this, that he wants you to bring your questions to him. Lord, how is it? That was the man's question. How is it? I'm trying to understand this. I'm I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. And the Lord Jesus kindly, patiently answers his question and begins to explain it. And so, friend, whatever your question, whatever your concern, whatever your confusion today, whatever that, that darkness is that you're grappling with, would you bring it to the one who is light and in him is no darkness at all? Here, in this man, this disciple that we know very little of, but we know he has three names, we find these three great truths. Love and obey Jesus today. Keep your testimony pure and clean for Christ and bring all your questions and concerns to the Lord. I believe these are the three marks of every true follower of Jesus Christ, and I hope and pray they'll be true of us today. Thank you for joining us today as we looked into God's Word. It is our prayer that you will follow Christ and lead others to Him. Our world is desperate for truth and hope. Scott Pauley has written a new booklet on the need of our nation that addresses what believers can and should be doing at this time. Order your copy now at enjoyingthejourney.org. We'd love to hear from you and look forward to studying with you again next time on Enjoying the Journey.